In a world with options, why would I keep coming back to what you offer? Yes, it's a decent product, but so is theirs, theirs, and theirs, and theirs. If you want my loyalty, give me something to love. By the end of this video, you'll understand what it means to apply the concept of Minimum Lovable Product or MLP to software development. This includes looking at how it compares to its little brother, the Minimum Viable Product or MVP. If I've done a good job explaining, you'll see that really the devil's in the detail. It should be something really small that separates the two. But that small thing decides whether your solution is a solution or the solution. Adrian Ching here, founder of Upstack Studio. We build mobile and web apps, and I'm on a mission to help non-technical founders avoid expensive mistakes, and most importantly, make good products that solve problems. Please subscribe and help me grow this channel so that this information gets out as far and wide as possible. If you look at minimum lovable product on Google, people seem to like comparing basic and fancy coffee to explain what an MLP is, with the argument that fancy coffee is better. And I think that's not quite right, because I prefer what they call basic coffee. And I know that lots of others do too. Same with software. Many people will take basic over fancy any day. These explanations can get ahead of themselves. They use specific examples that overgeneralize. And product development should be the opposite. A minimum lovable product is an extension of a minimum viable product. So I think it makes sense to first make sure we understand MVP. Once we move to MLP, you guys can be like, ah, see the difference. And it's not just about adding more. Let's give this some context. A new client comes along and they have an idea for an app. What happens is they come for a product room mapping workshop with me and by the end, we have clarity on what they ultimately want to offer. Now, we also know that only releasing the product once we reach that point is a bad idea for several reasons. Number one, you can never be 100% sure of what you need. Number two, we can start testing the viability of the solution way before we get to that point. So we look at everything they want and we screen through these questions. Can we hold this feature off for a week or more? If I remove this, does the product still solve the main customer problem? If I remove this feature, does the product still function? Did I add this because it's sexy and shiny? Am I on the fence about this feature? Whatever feature passes this question, they get added to a to-do list. Once we execute this list, they have a minimum viable product. It's a far cry from the vision in their head, but it's not meant to look or feel great. It's meant to solve the customer's problems. If it doesn't even do that, we have a way bigger issue than, oh, I don't know, the color selection? So my client now has a functional prototype they can test on users. Test collect feedback, make changes, then test again. A minimum lovable product goes through the same process, but with one small but significant difference in thinking. Just like a minimum viable product, a minimum lovable product must work. Unlike a minimum viable product, a minimum lovable product must also elicit a positive emotional response from the user. We don't have to give them the moon, but we don't want them to just say, yeah, that's what, what's for lunch? You want them to say, when are you guys launching? I want to be your first paying customer. It's not an exact science because we're dealing with emotions here, but it can be observed. And if we are methodical about this, we can identify what gets us there. It's definitely not about dressing up a cup of coffee and say, okay, now people must love it. I think a better example is to look at our relationship with others. The power of an emotional connection is a lot clearer when it's with humans instead of objects. But I assure you, it's the same thing. People are emotional about everything. I look at myself as an employer and owner of an app agency. What's the minimum viable product I need to provide to my team members? Salary. If I stop paying them, they would stop working for me. And that's the minimum I need to offer. It's also what every other employer offers. So how can I get them to choose me? I need to offer an experience that they will love. Not just once, but every day. People being people, there will be differences in what they want, but there will be similarities. I need to find these similarities and I need to act on them. If I can afford to provide it without hurting my business, I provide it. So I just do this one thing and I'm able to provide a lovable experience to all my stuff. That's a minimum lovable product I offer. Of course, I like knowing I provide a good working environment and as a business owner, I would be blind not to notice the return on investment I get because I go the extra mile 
so does my team. Here we are after our recent company retreat this year. We communicate well, we are focused, they pull late nights when they have to, some have been with me since the start of Upsec Studio and are invaluable. And whatever nuclear bomb explodes behind the scenes, clients don't need to know, we meet our deadlines. Actually, editor, cut that last part out. If I could sum it up in one word, I get loyalty. So now, we apply this to our client's app. The MVP stage is a given. It has to be a viable product, just like I have to provide a salary. Beyond bare bones functionality, what can create excitement in your target users from the first use? It varies from app to app, but it can only come from two things, features or UI UX. What feature or what level of UI UX, that's the question. If we can find that answer, if we can get people to have that emotional reaction, we have a better chance at a higher price point, we have a better chance at organic growth, we have a better chance people will allow us access to their data. And during tough times, people stay loyal because emotions are recession-proof. We need empathy and a good designer. Really step into customer's shoes and from there, find a compromise between what they'll enjoy and our own urgency to go to market as quickly as possible. That's why I really don't like these coffee examples. They seem to forget that we always start with the customer. They also completely ignore our needs as product owner. Should you start testing with an MVP or MLP? I hope there's no disagreement here that a minimum lovable product is always superior to a minimum viable product, especially if you put them side by side. It's literally like looking at a Pokemon evolving. So does that mean MLP is always the better choice? No, it depends on where you are in your journey as a founder. Do you already have a validated idea? If you don't, you better have a really good reason to push for MLP immediately. An MLP either has more features or more intricate UI UX or both. That means it will take more time and money to build compared to an MVP. Why take on extra risk to build something people will love when you don't even know if the people will find it useful? Also, who are you first testing it on? If it is your mom or close friends, then anything you do will be lovable to them. Better to just see if it works. Sorry to all the moms out there. Once we have a viable idea and the opportunity to test it on real users, on influential figures, or potential customers, suddenly there's a lot of value in waiting and spending just a bit more, but then you get a phenomenal response where they go, wow! Take Tinder, one of the most popular apps and probably the most popular dating app. What's its most defining feature? The one we immediately associate it with. It's the ability to swipe left or right on the potential match. It's gone beyond the app and entered normal everyday conversation. Imagine for a second, what would happen if Tinder removed that feature and used normal buttons instead? It just wouldn't feel like Tinder, right? Well, that's what it used to be like. The original version of Tinder in 2012 didn't have a swipe function. That's why I never got any matches. It's okay, my grandma says I'm handsome. <laughs> Anyways, Tinder was still popular and people were still paying for it even without the swipe feature. Which tells you the founders had a validated idea worth working on. Of course, Tinder's co-founder Jonathan Bardeen wanted to make the app lovable. He imagined sorting a pile of cards through three piles. Yes, no, and maybe. Each of those piles represented the desires of Tinder's users which needed to be translated into clear simple UI UX. And so, the swipe was born. The most lovable part of Tinder only came a year later in 2013. And think about it, from a coding point of view, it's such a tiny part. From a UX standpoint, it adds massive lovability. Since then, Tinder has exploded and being able to swipe is a big part of that and works because it makes an already viable experience lovable. So, what does Adrian recommend? I think the most important word here for us on the development side of things is minimum. As a customer, we want more value for our time and money. As a founder, you want the same things too. I like the idea of a minimum lovable product because it's not demanding huge changes to an already viable product. It's challenging us to find that smallest, simplest, most cost-effective add-on that will have a massive impact on early adoption. 
If you think about it, it's a compromise that doesn't feel like one when it's done right. As a founder, you want to minimize cost. You want to be down here at MVP level. Customers don't care about your cost. They want the best experience. In theory, their wants are limitless. MLP is that sweet spot where everyone is happy in the middle. Remember the question I asked at the start? In a world with options, why would I keep coming back to what you offer? And MLP answers that question really well. That's why Upstack Studio's policy is MLP wherever and whenever practical. I think I've made my point. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon for more video on app development made simple. Also, I'm very interested, have you ever had an experience with a product or service or person where you immediately fell in love with them? Tell us about it in the comment. Cheers guys!